Fight in the way of Allah those who fight you but do not transgress. Indeed, Allah does not like transgressors. And kill them wherever you overtake them and expel them from wherever they have expelled you. And fitna is worse than killing. And do not fight them at al-Masjid al-Haram until they fight you there. But if they fight you, then kill them. Such is the recompense of the disbelievers. And if they cease, then indeed Allah is forgiving and merciful. Fight them until there is no more fitna and until worship is acknowledged to be for Allah. But if they cease, then there is to be no aggression except against the oppressors. Fighting in the sacred month is for aggression committed in the sacred month and for all violations is legal retribution. So whoever has assaulted you, then assault him in the same way that he has assaulted you. And fear Allah, and know that Allah is with those who fear him. Fighting has been enjoined upon you while it is hateful to you. But perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you, and perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And Allah knows while you know not. They ask you about the sacred month, about fighting therein. Say, fighting therein is great sin, but averting people from the way of Allah and disbelief in Him and preventing access to al-Masjid al-Haram and the expulsion of its people therefrom are greater evil in the sight of Allah. And fitna is greater than killing. And they will continue to fight you until they turn you back from your religion if they are able. And whoever of you reverts from his religion to this belief and dies while he is a disbeliever, for those their deeds have become worthless in this world and the hereafter, and those are the companions of the fire. They will abide therein eternally. So let those fight in the cause of Allah who sell the life of this world for the hereafter. And he who fights in the cause of Allah and is killed or achieves victory, we will bestow upon him a great reward. Have you not seen those who were told, Restrain your hands from fighting and establish prayer and give zakah. But then when fighting was ordained for them, at once a party of them feared men as they fear Allah or with even greater fear. They said, Our Lord, why have you decreed upon us fighting? If only you had postponed it for us for a short time. Say, the enjoyment of this world is little, and the hereafter is better for he who fears Allah, and injustice will not be done to you, even as much as a thread inside a date seed. So fight, O Muhammad, in the cause of Allah. You are not held responsible except for yourself and encourage the believers to join you that perhaps Allah will restrain the military might of those who disbelieve. And Allah is greater in might and stronger in exemplary punishment. They wish you would disbelieve as they disbelieved so you would be alike. So do not take from among them allies until they emigrate for the cause of Allah. But if they turn away, then seize them and kill them wherever you find them and take not from among them any ally or helper. Except for those who take refuge with a people between yourselves, and whom is a treaty, or those who come to you, their hearts strained at the prospect of fighting you or fighting their own people. And if Allah had willed, he could have given them power over you, and they would have fought you. So if they remove themselves from you and do not fight you and offer you peace, then Allah has not made for you a cause for fighting against them. You will find others who wish to obtain security from you and to obtain security from their people. Every time they are returned to the influence of disbelief, they fall back into it. So if they do not withdraw from you or offer you peace or restrain their hands, then seize them and kill them wherever you overtake them. And those we have made for you against them a clear authorization.
O you who have believed, when you go forth to fight in the cause of Allah, investigate, and do not say to one who gives you a greeting of peace, you are not a believer, aspiring for the goods of worldly life. For with Allah are many acquisitions. You yourselves were like that before. Then Allah conferred his favor upon you, so investigate. Indeed, Allah is ever, with what you do, acquainted. Except for the oppressed among men, women, and children who cannot devise a plan, nor are they directed to a way. And when you are among them and lead them in prayer, let a group of them stand in prayer with you and let them carry their arms. And when they have prostrated, let them be in position behind you and have the other group come forward which has not yet prayed and let them pray with you, taking precaution and carrying their arms. Those who disbelieve wish that you would neglect your weapons and your baggage so they could come down upon you in one single attack. But there is no blame upon you if you are troubled by rain or are ill for putting down your arms, but take precaution. Indeed, Allah has prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating punishment. And do not weaken in pursuit of the enemy. If you should be suffering, so they are suffering as you are suffering. But you expect from Allah that which they expect not. And Allah is ever knowing and wise. O you who have believed, do not violate the rights of Allah or the sanctity of the sacred month or neglect the marking of the sacred animals and garlanding them, or violate the safety of those coming to the sacred house seeking bounty from their Lord and his approval. But when you come out of Ihram, then you may hunt, and do not let the hatred of a people for having obstructed you from al-Mashid al-Haram lead you to transgress, and cooperate in righteousness and piety but do not cooperate in sin and aggression, and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is severe in penalty. Indeed, the penalty for those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and strive upon earth to cause corruption is none but that they be killed or crucified or that their hands and feet be cut off from opposite sides or that they be exiled from the land. That is for them a disgrace in this world and for them in the hereafter is a great punishment. Except for those who return repenting before you apprehend them, and know that Allah is forgiving and merciful. This is so that Allah may distinguish the wicked from the good, and place the wicked, some of them upon others, and heap them all together and put them into hell. It is those who are the losers. And fight them until there is no fitna, and until the religion, all of it, is for Allah. And if they cease, then indeed Allah is seeing of what they do. And do not be like those who came forth from their homes insolently, and to be seen by people and avert them from the way of Allah. And Allah is encompassing of what they do. So if you, O Muhammad, gain dominance over them in war, disperse by means of them those behind them that perhaps they will be reminded and prepare against them whatever you are able of power and of steeds of war by which you may terrify the enemy of Allah and your enemy and others besides them whom you know not but whom Allah knows. And whatever you spend in the cause of Allah will be fully repaid to you and you will not be wronged. And if they incline to peace, then incline to it also and rely upon Allah. Indeed, it is he who is the hearing, the knowing. It is not for a prophet to have captives of war until he inflicts a massacre upon Allah's enemies in the land. Some Muslims desire the commodities of this world, but Allah desires for you the hereafter, and Allah is exalted in might and wise. And when the sacred months have passed, then kill the polytheists wherever you find them, and capture them and besiege them and sit in wait for them at every place of ambush. But if they should repent, establish prayer, and give zakah, let them go on their way. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. If they repent, establish prayer, and give zakah, then they are your brothers in religion, and we detail the verses for a people who know.
And if they break their oaths after their treaty and defame your religion, then fight the leaders of disbelief. For indeed, there are no oaths sacred to them. Fight them that they might cease. Fight them. Allah will punish them by your hands and will disgrace them and give you victory over them and satisfy the breasts of a believing people. Indeed, the number of months with Allah is twelve lunar months in the register of Allah from the day he created the heavens and the earth. Of these, four are sacred. That is the correct religion, so do not wrong yourselves during them. And fight against the disbelievers collectively as they fight against you collectively. And know that Allah is with the righteous who fear him. O you who have believed, what is the matter with you that when you are told to go forth in the cause of Allah, you adhere heavily to the earth? Are you satisfied with the life of this world rather than the hereafter? But what is the enjoyment of worldly life compared to the hereafter except a very little? If you do not go forth, he will punish you with a painful punishment and will replace you with another people and you will not harm him at all. And Allah is over all things competent. Go forth, whether light or heavy, and strive with your wealth and your lives in the cause of Allah. That is better for you, if you only knew. May Allah pardon you, O Muhammad. Why did you give them permission to remain behind? You should not have until it was evident to you who were truthful and you knew who were the liars. Only those would ask permission of you who do not believe in Allah and the last day and whose hearts have doubted and they in their doubt are hesitating. And among them is he who says, Permit me to remain at home and do not put me to trial. Unquestionably, into trial they have fallen, and indeed, hell will encompass the disbelievers. And when a surah was revealed enjoining them to believe in Allah and to fight with his messenger, those of wealth among them asked your permission to stay back and said, Leave us to be with them who sit at home. There is not upon the weak or upon the ill, or upon those who do not find anything to spend, any discomfort when they are sincere to Allah and his messenger. There is not upon the doers of good any cause for blame, and Allah is forgiving and merciful. The cause for blame is only upon those who ask permission of you while they are rich. They are satisfied to be with those who stay behind, and Allah has sealed over their hearts so they do not know. And it is not for the believers to go forth to battle all at once, for there should separate from every division of them a group remaining to obtain understanding in the religion and warn their people when they return to them that they might be cautious. O you who have believed, fight those adjacent to you of the disbelievers and let them find in you harshness and know that Allah is with the righteous. Permission to fight has been given to those who are being fought because they were wronged. And indeed, Allah is competent to give them victory. So when you meet those who disbelieve in battle, strike their necks until, when you have inflicted slaughter upon them, then secure their bonds and either confer favor afterwards or ransom them until the war lays down its burdens. That is the command. And if Allah had willed, he could have taken vengeance upon them himself, but he ordered armed struggle to test some of you by means of others. And those who are killed in the cause of Allah, never will he waste their deeds. So do not weaken and call for peace while you are superior. And Allah is with you and will never deprive you of the reward of your deeds. Say to those who remained behind of the Bedouins, you will be called to face a people of great military might. You may fight them, or they will submit. So if you obey, Allah will give you a good reward. But if you turn away as you turned away before, He will punish you with a painful punishment. There is not upon the blind any guilt, or upon the lame any guilt, or upon the ill any guilt for remaining behind. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, he will admit him to gardens beneath which rivers flow, 
but whoever turns away, he will punish him with a painful punishment. And if two factions among the believers should fight, then make settlement between the two. But if one of them oppresses the other, then fight against the one that oppresses until it returns to the ordinance of Allah. And if it returns, then make settlement between them in justice and act justly. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and do not expel you from your homes, from being righteous toward them and acting justly toward them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. <laughs>